Anders, that was awesome. Thanks, right, man. Thanks. Welcome to live from the mothership right here at Steve Vai's personal studio. And with me, I have Andy Alt, the COO of GuitarTV.com. And I want to thank you very much for having us here along with this great introduction to the mothership sessions. Very excited. This is our very first mothership studio live broadcast. We have the uh, distinct honor of having guitar tricks here. We've got Neil Anders and Lee. And they're each going to be presenting a unique lesson to you, and we will be answering questions and giving away very cool prizes. But Neil will tell you all about that. I'm just honored that you guys are here. So, um, Likewise. Without any further ado, I will turn it over to you and uh, awesome. have fun. Thanks, man. Woohoo! Welcome. Thank you for joining us right here. And uh, we're each going to give you our own personal lesson, and then we'll take questions from you on Facebook. So feel free to get ready to ask your questions. And I'd like to thank TuneTrack for sponsoring this event. And they are they create uh, Easy Drummer and help us create the backing tracks that you just heard. We're going to do a live jam at the end. You can check out TuneTrack at TuneTrack.com. We're going to do a live jam at the end, combining everything that we've uh, taught in this lesson. So we're going to get started right about now with Anders. Yeah. is going to take off and uh, show you the first in a series of three brief fun lessons. Thanks for joining us. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about something that I'm working on in my own playing and I'm really glad to have gone to guitar school and learned how to play and everything and you know learned a bunch of different tools and how to play different styles and all of that and it really helps me to make a living and you know do guitar tricks videos and and play in many different contexts but when I play for myself and nobody's telling me how to play and there's not a context that somebody else defined that I need to fit into, I generally like the sound of the guys who didn't go to school and who didn't learn to play scales and arpeggios. And, but it can be hard to sort of turn that on and off because you still want to be able to play clean and, and, and sound school when you need to. And Show off all the stuff you learned. Exactly. Yeah, you still <laughs> want to use that, you know, times like now. But I also want to be able to turn it off. So I'm just going to show you some sort of tricks that I used to do that to sort of pull me out of my own little box. Uh, and one of those things is to just slide up anywhere on the neck. Let's say we're in the key of A, right? I'll just not look at the neck and just slide up and bend up. And then you just, you don't have to know where you're going or where you're going to end up. You just have to do it with conviction and just... And that face. Yeah. And that face. You, yes. The face is really important. Um, and that usually works. Sometimes you end up something where really random. I ended up the same place randomly twice, but I don't really know. But you just use your ears to find it. And if you don't hit anything, you just do it again. And look at the audience as if you meant it. And very often I'll do it, and I'll look down and I'll find myself in in a pattern that I'm familiar with, and I'll sort of take it home and show that I, I generally sort of know what I'm doing, uh, even if the first one sort of raises some eyebrows. So that's a really useful one I use. Um, it's exciting too. It's an exciting way to draw people in. Yeah. Like if you're about to start a solo. Yeah, exactly. You don't know exactly where to start no. maybe, <laughs> or you just want to do something that gets their attention. Exactly, because it's, it's ultimately all about tension and resolution, you know, so it's a good way to really create some tension and make people pay attention, like you said. Uh, another thing I do is, is I just play downstrokes because when you have technique and stuff like that, it's, it's easy to play too much and so, limitation is generally a good thing so I find myself playing a lot of just downstrokes because it it sort of slows down my phrasing um, but the, again that's something you need to be able to turn on and off so I'll play where if I was using upstrokes maybe I'd go or something which is just too much so it's better to just sort of limit yourself and and sound a little and then you sort of start getting ideas from melodies and, and stuff because limitation is really good for the creativity sometimes um, another thing I do is a lot of open tunings mostly on acoustic guitar because then you really don't have any idea what you're doing and you're sort of back to square one and be like okay if I combine these two notes you know eventually you start noticing the pattern and start finding sort of out where the different notes are. It's good ear training too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really you're cool. Forced to rely on what you're hearing. Exactly. Instead of just doing the things you're used to doing. Um, another thing I do is to try to play stuff that would be hard for someone to transcribe. So, because those are the guys I like. Like, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan is really easy to transcribe. You know, it's very clear phrases, very clear subdivisions. You know, he'll play. 
very sort of clear triplet lick. You can hear every note uh, or eighth note lick or something like that, where Hendrix is just like, what is he doing? But it sounds super cool. Right, right. So I try to do that um, in my own playing also, by instead of playing licks and lines and, and melodies and stuff like that, you just sort of create some energy that you sort of... <laughs> So, kind of sounds like breaking the rules, playing outside of the box. Yeah. And kind of. That's, that's I heard the idea. Uh, Eddie Van Halen say one time that if you don't know the rules, you can't break them. Yeah. So that's it's kind true. of like once you've, you get a maximum point, you know, where you've learned all this stuff and you've studied mm -hmm. all your scales and chords and the modes and the yeah. diminish this and the sharp that, and it really comes down to musicianship and playing. So it's good to be able to take all that and just kind of throw it out the window. Exactly. And once just, in a while. And, yeah. Because it can be really limiting creatively to know a lot of stuff, you know, and it could be really cool to just not know it for a second, you know. Right. So how you can sort of trick your brain into right. getting back there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's something I'm working on. So what do you, uh, what do you find is the, gets you the tone that you like the best, amp-wise, setting-wise? Yeah, I, I like my um, 70s Silver Face Super Reverb Fender. It's just ever since I was probably 15 or something like that, I've just preferred that sound, and whenever I plug into one, it's just, oh, home. It just reacts the way I want it to, and I generally don't enjoy searching for gear as much as many other guitar players do. Right. I just kind of want it to be there, and so I can make music. You know, where a lot of people get a lot of joy out of, you know, shooting up pedals and stuff like that. I forgot to mention Andrew's specialties: amazing blues. He knows blues inside and out. He he taught our blues one and two courses at GuitarTricks.com, and so that's Andrew's specialty, and that amp totally fits in with that tone yeah it's really so, dynamic you know you can even just the tone i have now you can you can get so much out of it where a lot of people like pedals uh, that are really compressed and it doesn't matter how you pick it but it's just going to be in full volume all the time and that's great for playing rock but i like to be able to do that subtle talking whisper yeah, talk and, scream So you can get a lot without even changing changing any knobs or stepping on any pedals. You can just get a different expression out of it. So Anders, for our viewers out there who are into the blues, you also into country. You're yeah, you've got some great country chops and knowledge under your belt. But for our viewers out there who might be more into the blues, maybe they can't afford a vintage amp or maybe they don't have the right pedal. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest for some basic tone settings with what you've got to get like a bluesier sound out of your guitar? Well, I would say to go really easy on the distortion because you're generally better off with the sound that's too clean than one that's too distorted. And a lot of people make that mistake because it feels really comfortable to have a lot of distortion. You can sort of yeah. hide behind it a little bit. But if you have the dynamic, sort of loud, punchy, clean tone, yeah. it's better than being sort of too squashed and compressed from all the distortion. What specific settings, like bass, mid, treble, works for you for blues? I like a lot of treble, generally. You know, that's why where, would you put, where would you put the bass in the mids? It always depends on the amp, so you have to use your ears because every piece of gear is different. Even between two super reverbs, it might react differently, yeah. the pots you know, okay. and the knobs. So you just got to use your ears to find something. But that's another thing that people do is they, they'll crank up the bass and turn down the treble because then it feels good when they're playing. Oh, yeah, you get that. But it's not going to cut through the band and it's not going to sound very authentic. So right. turn the bass down and turn the treble up and a little bit of reverb and you're good to go. Wail away. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Throw all the rules out the window and you're good to go. Pretty much. Well, they're great to learn and they're really, really helpful too, you know, but you, if you can turn it on and off, then you're good to go. Right, yeah. right. So we'd like to see if you guys have some questions for Anders or for this topic in general, or anything, throw anything at us. We're going to give away a CD from uh, Dream Theater's brand new CD. Our friend John Petrucci would like you to have one of these, so we're gonna give that away. Um, you have to be commenting in order to win. We're also gonna give away a Zach Wild signature crybaby wall that looks something like this right here. So make sure and uh, put your comments in, questions, and we'll be giving away a CD here in just a minute. We got our first question from Blister Fingers. Good name. What if you had a solid state amp? So you usually use tube amps. What yeah. if you had a solid state amp? What, would, what kind of difference 
dialing in would you use for your tone? It, again, it would be the same general thing to just really watch out for too much bass and too much distortion. Because what you got to remember is if B.B. King were to plug into your solid state amp, he would probably make it sound like a million bucks. And he's actually right. notorious for just showing up at the venue and playing whatever <laughs> amp they have there. Right. So you just got to like get as close to the sound you like with whatever gear you have. Like Put on a record and whether it's a solid state amp or a modeling amp or a full on vintage tube amp, just use your ears to dial in and make sure you don't make the mistake of too much bass or too much distortion. All right, good advice. So. Solid blues advice. All right. Yeah. Well, you any more got... questions? What song has been the most fun to learn at Guitar Tricks? Anders has done, like, how many songs have you done? I don't even know. That's a, a big, lot. long list. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what was your most favorite song? Well, I've been lucky. I've gotten a lot of really, really cool songs. A lot of Steve Ray Vaughan, a lot of Almond Brothers, a lot of Eagles. But I think the one that I've enjoyed the most personally was Jessica by the Almond Brothers band. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That was one of the early ones he did, too. Yeah, it's just so much great playing. It was a beast to learn. You know, it's the... Why do you like it so much? It's just, it sort of has that, you know, sitcom-y feel. It's it's really fun to play. It's, uh... Did you say sitcom-y feel? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like the intro to a sitcom a little bit. But it's you just... know what? You you recommend practicing when you want to practice techniques and scales uh, on your guitar to to do it in front of the TV when the guitar is turned off. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. So that's is that why it's got a sitcom <laughs> feel? No, I I don't know, <laughs> but it, that's it's just full of great sort of major pentatonic soloing vocabulary. You know, real melodic bits, really melodic. Yeah. Just great phrasing. It's the same five notes all over the place, but just awesome phrasing. All right, we got another one from Duke of Prunes. Nice. How can I connect my pentatonic boxes on the fretboard? How do I practice that? So I have, I have a good answer to that because a lot of people get stuck in thinking sort of vertically on the guitar, you know, you'll... And then you'll go. Right? But what you want to try to do to change that up is think more horizontally. So try to play scales on one string, for example. Let's say we're in E minor, like I just was just now, right? If you use your ears to find the minor pentatonic scale, but just on one string, let's say on the high E string. See, now I know where it is, but you would have to go. Just use your ears to find it, right? Because then you can use that to connect the patterns. Do it on the B string, for example. Then you're off into a new pattern. So for example, if you start down in your, your C very on open pattern, right? then you just go up. up to your familiar pattern up here, right? And I just went up on one string, slid up, pick, slide. And if you do that, you can also do it with, with bends, for example, like. So that's a really good way to get around between the patterns. And another one is to just stop and switch pattern, because silence is not a bad thing when you're soloing, typically. And that's something a lot of people forget. They think they have to play all the time, but just stop and take a breather and Find your new box and stop and smell cool. the notes once in a while. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's great advice. One more. One God guitarist. Thank you for writing in. We've got. Uh, what about using the three one three version of the pentatonics? The three one three. Is that like the two one three? I don't know what. I that don't know is. what the three one three either. <laughs> is it like? Uh, three notes per string. Oh, three notes per string. Okay. Yeah, I don't really play a lot of music where that's appropriate. Like I, I used to sort of do a lot of that just because I wanted to play fast and then it's, it's a great tool or if you like those styles of music, but I personally don't play that style of music, yeah. so I don't really use it. You know, I used to sit and practice it because I wanted to show off, right. but that was really the only motivation for me because I don't play or listen to the styles of music where it's used and then I just forgot about it. So right. I try to just play fewer notes and make them, them better. Not that that's better or worse than, than playing. For the blues though, stuff. it's the ticket yeah i'd find it. less I'd is find more it. yeah exactly well one thing about the uh three notes three strings yeah what he was talking about is that if you're using the how you said come up one string at a time yeah to the higher one that you yeah. know if you do that per string yeah across the three strings you can learn the three string pattern that's just by point. doing that by yeah one string at a time over Absolutely. time yeah. you'll be more familiar where the notes are yeah do some of that shredding stuff. Yeah, exactly. Let's give away some stuff. 
That sounds like a great idea. Uh, brand new Dream Theater CD. We're going to give it away to one lucky winner right now. And uh, we're going to have a new instructor coming your way. His, his specialty is in metal, shred lead. He's a great guitar player. Lee Warner coming up next. And he was playing that amazing custom guitar that you saw on the left side of your screen right as we started. And uh, there is a big bucket full of names. And Carl over here is spinning it right now. We're going to pull a winner out of that and uh, give away a brand new Dream Theater CD because John Petrucci said so. That's why. Thank you to Tune Track for sponsoring the show, maker of Easy Drummer, and uh, to Andy Alt and Steve Vai for having us in the Mothership studio. Stay tuned for more sessions coming from the Mothership right here. There's been a couple uh, major albums recorded right here on this board. I believe Passion and Warfare was recorded right here. And uh, there's a lot of history going on right now. This microphone says Channel 15, Vi Guitar. Pretty awesome. Smells like shred. <laughs> Lee, come on in, sit down. We're going to give away a CD right now. And the tube is spinning. They're pulling out a winner. And it is Kudzu Atlanta, ATL. I know what Kudzu is. That's right. I've driven through the south, and that stuff grows everywhere. That's a great name. Kudzu ATL, you're the winner of the brand new Dream Theater CD. Congratulations. Um, you'll be contacted of where to send your info, and we'll send you the goods ASAP. We're going to give away a couple more CDs and that Zach Wild wah pedal, signature wah coming up real soon right now. I'm going to hand it over to Lee. Lee's going to teach you some of his shred secrets, Yeah, I've top got a, secrets. I've got something cool for you, but before I get right into it, um, there's something I wanted to kind of add on to Andrew's great lesson, the point about um, creating limitations to expand your creativity. Something I thought was really cool was, um, I think there was a group of writers, I heard about this, who then wrote a book excluding the letter E from the book. So then they had to really invent new creative ways to their writing. And you can do the same thing with your playing. If you, especially in metal, you're going to find a lot of people who are kind of exclusively in the 64th or 128th notes, you know? Yeah, sure. So it could actually be cool then to practice um, some of your same lines but with a different rhythmic sort of value to them, I and mean, you could just do them in triplets, for example. Right, that's, that's a great idea. But, uh, so the lick I want to show you guys, the, um, in the shred world, eh, it seems like sooner or later everybody learns their um, sweeps. Of course. So Number yeah. one request, show us right. some sweeps. So uh, now one thing about sweeps, however, um, is that most of the time people are just playing it from the root. You know? Yeah, that's how everybody learns it. And there's a huge huge like a lot of options available and it's going to be a really special sound uh if you don't know 100 percent what i'm talking about when i'm talking about sweeps i would check out like jason becker for example he's like a sweet monster very spectacular anyways so what i wanted to do was just take an e like we had in our jam at the beginning of the segment here and you can take this e uh, major triad all right now if you start that same triad down a half step, instead of getting a major tonality, you're going to get like a minor seven, excuse me, a minor major seven. So here's our E. And then, of course, you want to come back to the, the root or the original tonality to sort of resolve it nicely. So the lick is this. We start up with this major, uh, this major triad. I'm going to start with the high, the high end of it. And descend. Easy, just move it down a half step, go back up. Then go back to our E major triad again, this time with this shape. You know, resembling that triad shape that everybody learns. Then we take that, move it down a half step. So, so far we have this. All right, and then we can just end it up with our E triad from down here. And a cool way to end it also is you roll your index finger down onto the E string and you can end with your open E, you know. So let me try to demonstrate this a little bit. Faster, more faster. Hasty. Yeah, exactly. Faster, <laughs> faster. Yeah, something like that. And you can really get your get your crazy. Get your sweep on. Yeah, exactly. 
Actually, and now that you now that you mention it, I find that um, or that I mentioned, I guess I don't know. But the harmony is becoming a bigger thing in metal these days. At one point, it was a lot more random. You get these thrashy guitars, and lots of high energy, and it's really cool, you know. But nowadays, you're finding a lot of um, a lot of bands are adding melodies of harmony, a lot of clean guitars, and even some chord changes. It's not going on a lot, but you know, we'll see that. I think developed. I hear a lot more heavy combined with melodic, which I think is really cool. Yeah, which actually brings me to um, something. Um, get a lot of questions about like gent. A lot of people don't know what gent is. Actually, it's funny. It turns out, but gent. Yeah, gent. Like gentlemen. J G E N T. Actually, there's a lot of jokes on that where they'll <laughs> say, you know, ladies and the gentlemen, you know, and it's spelled like everybody's got some kind of, you know, pun for that now. But anyhow, the the idea behind gent, I think it was originally coined by Meshuggah. But in, not everybody wasn't saying it all the time. You mean like dun dun? dun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, destroy race. Ladies and, prove. and gentlemen, gent. This is what it really sounds like. I mean, that kind of that was like a destroy race and prove thing. With sugar, you know, must if you not familiar with sugar, I just highly recommend buying it. All this stuff. I hear they're crazy. They're amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, oh yeah. So, uh, so I got a question about your lesson though. Yeah. Because you, uh, it sounds really cool. The descending pattern and the 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 change of notes. What would you recommend that would work well over? Like what kind of chords progression? Like one particular chord or like a certain chord progression that that would work over? Ah, you know what? Personally, I really have a strong conviction about this, at least in my own playing, you know. Um, I admire all types of players. But um, I'm not really into looking at things uh, all in relation to each other. You know what I mean? So like if I'm going to play over various chords, I, I don't consider them, okay, where's like my tonal center, where's the key center, mm -hmm. and then like if there's all these chords going by and the whole time I'm playing basically over one chord, I find if you do that you actually miss out on a lot of really cool chord tones, mm -hmm. you miss out on a lot of the spice that you can get. So I like to look at every chord individually, you know, and that being said, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways to apply the triads, and if it's a minor chord, you can play a major, um, a major triad down a half step to get that minor major seven sound, which was in that scenario, but what we did was just over an E root, right? So there was actually no uh, okay. deep harmony implied. So there was no major seven. There was no dominant seven. That's what seven. I was wondering. Like, what so, would be the I mean, actually, that's a really cool trick, too, because you can play your solo, and if you spend most of your time in minor, and then you land on that major third, oh, it's spicy. It what adds the? Some, yeah, I, I Where hear did that major third a come lot from? of that's particularly interesting. Looks like we have a question. We got a question? We have a question from oh. Paul Last. How would you apply modes in the metal playing? Well... Modes, okay. Uh, I, the way I first learned modes probably was the way a lot of, you know, people interested in playing quickly and shred and everything, and it's kind of along the Paul Gilbert school and all those guys. And this would be the three note per string. Um, remind me about the three note per string. I would like to make a comment on the pr previous question about the three note per string pentatonics. The pentatonic pattern? But before that, the modes. So um, here's how I learned, say, G major mode, three note per string. Right, same thing on the next string. Shifting the index finger up. Same thing next string. Pretty simple. Shift up. Just like so. And then what do you do? First thing, just try to start blazing, you know? Now, how to apply them is basically when you learn them all, this was my first step anyhow, when I started learning them. You learn all the modes and you find then actually you've kind of dominated the fretboard. You got your major here. Your Dorian, you know, and you could just take Ionian, which is major, and Dorian, and then, uh, you know, practice kind of alternating between the two. Let me give you an example. This was from Please our do. this was from our Dorian, and then our major, which is I'm going down a little bit more, but so if I mix them together, we have something like I'll just do it real slow and improvise at, at random, essentially. Now we've covered that much fretboard with, you know, two patterns basically. Right. And the thing is, there's only seven patterns. The eighth pattern is the same as the first up in an higher octave. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let me uh, let me do that again. Of course, I improvise it, so I don't actually know the exact notes I played there. But what? That's also another point. That one of my favorite things is, it's that improvising. I think is a beautiful thing. I think it's a beautiful thing too. I'll play through that slowly.
Got it. Thanks. Slower. I got it. All right. should give you a disclaimer, I actually habitually went into Lydian, which is another mode. What? Let me actually point out something cool here. If you were playing over a G major chord, um, you have G major, obviously, that would be Ionian. But you can also play Lydian. Why? Because it actually has the same chord tones. You're just changing one of your scale tones to a sharp four, and it's a little spicier. I like cool little cheat things that's almost like getting two scales in one. Two scales in one, where they're both use the same pattern they're close and by using them in different positions yeah. it's it's like learning twice as much yeah it's a it's a fun way to get some special extra stuff we got a question uh oh good one i was gonna read another one Can, actually well, <laughs> what I? kind of amp are you using um oh my amp yeah i saw that oh. where was it i have um auto I, 1973 what amp are you using right now i've got um, i thought you had cool tone so thank you yeah. yeah i've got um two amps that i really use a lot uh, one is a brown note amp. This guy Moss, he made it for me. You can look into his stuff. It's super fantastic. I get a lot of, a lot of, uh, I get a really fat tone from it. You know, for that kind of amp, I use uh, a guitar that's made special for me by Michael Spalt, who's also more than a, uh, more than a luthier. He's a visionary. He really, he's an artist. So, just the most beautiful creations. I can't believe. Yeah, feel free. Um, <clears throat> this is Andy Alt modeling. The Michael Spalt guitar here. Um, anyway, yeah, the guy is a total brilliant. Uh, you know, he's a master at his craft, and he's a very cool guy. You know, um, you check out his website, see all that stuff. Um, That's now, a really cool axe. For the, for the metal stuff, which I use a lot of, actually, because it's so much fun, I use a Line 6 Veta 2 amplifier, which they don't make right now. You can still get them. Uh, they make these other things, like, I don't know, some pods, and some of those, I think, are... are pretty advanced and pretty good. However, you have to get a preamp for them and I get overwhelmed really easy with like more gear and like knobs, you know. So, um, but it's great. It's great because I get a super heavy sound and I use an eight string a lot with it actually. Um, I use it a lot for recording. There's only one band that I can really think of. I mean, you know, one band that really comes to mind at least, it's an LA local band named PDP. They, um, they, uh, they really dominate the entire Eight string, nine string. One of them has, I think, I think they're getting, they have nine strings too or something. And uh, where know, does it end? I know, right? That's harp. <laughs> so, but the thing is, you know, they've got like the huge chuggy rhythms, you know, those like Meshuga S. <laughs> with like the crazy. I'm but get back they to shred up quest. the high stuff too. It's cool. Sorry. Didn't no, no problem. Um, before I, I wanted to bring it up, before I forget, you brought up mentioning something about the three string pentatonic oh, yeah, pattern. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you were gonna say something about that. Uh oh yeah, okay, cool. Thought well, I might help the. Um, person who had a question about it earlier. That's good, yeah. Um, I, um, I got an interesting perspective on those ones from one of my very favorite guitar players, a guy named Alex Makachek. Um, also, his album Sick changed my life. So, I mean, no exaggeration. I'm, I'm a different person before and after. It's amazing. Anyway, so here was his tip. And kind of like we were implying other, or superimposing other triads over one chord, you can do the same thing with pentatonic scales. So let's say we have an A minor chord. Right? You could play A minor pentatonic. Everybody knows that, you know, or most people. So then there's E minor pentatonic, you know, and you can do E minor pent pentatonic or A minor. Now, if we take our three note per string, it's just, I mean, another way of, of being creative, you know, you're getting some variation in your sound. For example, this is, for anyone who may not know, the same pentatonic scales, but three notes each string. So, and then there's the E minor one and so forth. Now one thing you can do that's a neat trick to get some more harmonically interesting solos, you can play a few notes from A minor, let's say, and in this case I'm using that three note per string, or E minor, and then you got kind of double the range to solo in, getting a lot of extra tonalities and such. And the cool thing is, is this inside, outside, inside approach, which um, you can hear Holdsworth do a lot. Um, and I'll just do a simple version. I'll just take the first four notes or here and then go up to the tritone or sharp four, this case would be the sixth fret, do the same exact shape. And then slide it up one fret 
And now we're in our E minor. So we had A minor, uh, D sharp minor, and E minor. And it's like inside, which is very home. Outside, which is very, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. And then just in time, you come in on that E minor and you're home again. It's actually kind of, while I'm talking about chord tones and such and inside, outside, I'd like to make kind of a fun analogy that I tell all my students. Can I, or should I, can I finish? All right. So May I finish. Here we May go. May I finish. Basically, I separate everything into three kinds of notes. Chord tones, scale tones, and passing tones. Okay, scale tones, excuse me, chord tones, they're like your family. You know, it's where you spend most of your time. You sleep there, you eat there, usually. Uh, scale tones would be like your friends, you know. Like, without them, life gets boring, and, and especially without chord tones. So, uh, you got your scale tones keeping life interesting. Then you have your passing tones. These are like that vomiting bum on the street, you know. So, essentially, you don't want to hang out with him. You know, you don't stop and converse with the bum, you know, the vomiting and whatnot. So, what you do... However, is you get as quickly home as possible and you have some good laughs about it, meaning that passing tone made your life more interesting. And that's exactly what happens with your solos. Never going to solo the same way again. With the imagery. Every I time I hit a flat five. Play the lick? <laughs> cool. All right, so that lick I did before, A, C, D, and G. That's the shape. I just take that shape and I start on the sixth fret. And then the same thing on the uh, seventh fret. That would be our E minor pentatonic. So we went from A, no man's land, which was you know taking like D sharp, and then E. And then really what you want to do to make it more interesting, other than just totally dominating the fretboard this way, is um, permutations, meaning just put the same notes together in a different order. So instead of doing the first one like that, we could do the next one maybe backwards, as just a simple example. And then maybe really randomize the next one. Low note, high note, second lowest, second highest. Then we have a little more interesting. You know, the more you permutate them, the more mysterious cool. it gets. And I yeah. think that's also a cool thing about what Anders was saying. I, I, I feel that way too. When you hear something super hard to transcribe, essentially it's, um, it's the mystique. You know, how is this really happening? You know, right. sometimes when something's how does too that clean. Work? It's working. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I can't duplicate it. That's what makes it magic. Right. So I see that I've got this. We got one more question for Lee from Stefanos. Can you show how to do clean vibratos? This is good. Actually, this is something when it, people ask me what, what a beginner should start with. You know, there's songs, there's reading, there's everything. And the most important thing to me would be that they eliminate what I call, I can say this, the guitar center vibrato. <laughs> you know, so like when you go to guitar center, you're going to hear this like, let's see if I can do it. It's been a while. And that's, we want to get away from that. So basically what you want to do is just play the note, slowly bend it up. You know, I like certain players, like Scott Henderson's a great player, and he'll just take a note and like bend it off the fretboard, like pull it up to his head, you know, it's, it's a great sound. But basically you want to play a note, bend it slowly, then try manipulating the vibrato while you're already up there. How slow can we make it without losing the note? Sometimes beginners will relieve the pressure from the string and then the note just dies. So you want to really hold it down. Looks like you're using your other fingers to help support the band. Yeah. And you know, that's something you really learn through osmosis, I think. I, I think I did anyhow. I didn't sit down and go, well, I need to move my thumb, you know, and squeeze with my thumb, you know, which is essentially what's happening. I find something else I recommend to all my students is that they um, watch a lot of YouTube. And the cool thing there is that, for one, you don't get a lot of teachers going, now I want you, to, did you watch YouTube this week? You know? But the thing is, you watch all these players on YouTube and you just pick up on little things, just like you know when you're learning how to walk as a child. You know, you just see it and then you would duplicate. So, very hum human, you know, to do. So basically, uh, you see how they do it, and then you emulate it over a period of time. It seeps in. I, I really recommend that approach. I think also, YouTube is great because there's so many. If you want to get something quick, and there's so much information out there, it's a great way to do it. But one thing I like about your lessons on guitar tricks is that they're structured so well. You get one little one little bite and learn it, and then you move on to the next one. Yeah. We got a great director. That's right. That Carl guy King. right there. Carl King <laughs> wrote the book, by the way, on creativity. You should look that one up. Cool. So you're a creative genius now. What? I own it. It's very should cool. we give away some stuff? Yeah. That sounds great. Let's give away another uh, CD. Is wait, uh, is that a big round of applause for Lee? It is. All right. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. We have a studio audience. Yeah. Right on. Cool. Thank you, Lee, very yeah, much. That thank was you. awesome. I learned a lot of stuff. See you at the next jam. Yes. In a few minutes. In a few minutes. So let's give away another CD, shall we? 
Uh, brand new Dream Theater CD. John Petrucci said he wanted us to give it to you, so we're going to do that right now, and we're going to pick a winner in just a couple minutes. Once again, thanks to TuneTrack at TuneTrack.com for supplying the backing track. You'll hear it at the end of this. We're going to have a full jam, and I think we might bring in uh, might bring in a guest on the jam at the end. No, maybe not. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> the winner is Thunder Notes. Thunder Notes, congratulations. You have a brand new copy of the Dream Theater CD coming your way. Stand by, and, uh, and we'll contact you for your info. And we're going to move on. I'm going to do a lesson myself right now. Are you guys good? Should I move over to the, a seat, or just are we good right here? Okay, we're good right here. Cool. I just need my special small mic. Because it's special. And it's small. So my um, forte, my style is more of a blues rock, maybe slashes slash style more than uh, a shred style so um, I wanted to share with you uh, a real handy lick it's one of the most popular videos that we've done uh, it's a three-in-one lick pentatonic pattern in the key of A minor and I'm gonna play the three licks for you right here I think it's really handy it's geared more towards the beginner intermediate player but it's a great way to play fast and to get a bag of tricks going for you mm. so the three licks are these ones right here And they're all really simple, and they're all in the in the same position. And I'm going to be playing at the uh, fifth fret, A minor pattern. And along with the uh, comment we got earlier, this will be a three string, actually uh, three string pattern, pentatonic pattern. And the first one is the Chuck Berry riff. I'm going to bend up from the seventh fret of the G string a whole step. When you bar the first two strings, and go down and up, and then repeat. Second riff uses the same bend, and you hit the fifth fret of the B string, and then pull off from the seventh to fifth fret of the G string. Slowly, that's. And the third lick from this three in one series is the same bend up. And then you go to the 5th fret of the B string and do a pull off from the 8th fret of the B string back to the 5th. So it's And then I round it off with a bend up to the, to the A, which is the tonic of the scale. So put them all together and you've got this. And there are three very different sounding riffs, but they're all in the same position, and they're super easy to play, and that's one thing I like about it. You can also, on the last riff, if you land on the flat fifth, it's a really cool lick in this position. Quick and easy, three and one. Nice little easy lick for you right there. And... Um, one tip I'd like to share with you when you're playing with bands and uh, I notice a lot of players, especially when they're starting out and they're dialing in their turn, they'll do the scoop thing on the EQ where you have the low up and the high up and the mids are dropping. That sounds great when you're in your room and you're jamming by yourself. But when you go to play with a band, you might find that your sound, sound is buried with that EQ sitting. So a great way to be heard with your band is to give your mids a boost. Boost up the mids a little bit and drop the bass because the bass will be handling the bass frequencies and this will make your guitar jump out through the band which would be really cool because you and everybody else will hear you and that's the whole idea. So I'm going to field some questions from our audience uh, on Facebook out there and then we're going to give away I believe another CD and that really cool signature Zach Wilde Duncan wall pedal, Dunlap wall pedal, sorry I was thinking of donuts for a second and I got my wording mixed up. I'm getting hungry. All right, Stefanos, what technique can I use to not look at the fretboard while playing the guitar? Really good question. Um, for me, what works for me to get from playing and staring at your guitar to playing and not staring at guitar is, of course, 
knowing what you're playing really well. So a lot of practice on your main chords. If you're, I don't know where you're at and you're playing, but if you're learning chords and you want to do more songwriting, changing between chords without looking at your guitar, then my advice to you would be to start small. Start with two chords, like a D and a G. Start with just small pieces of what you want to play without looking and practice it until you have the muscle memory in your hand and then try doing it without looking at your guitar. So start small, take off little bite-sized chunks, play them till you can play without looking at your fretboard and then add on the next part of the, either the chord or the lick that you want to be playing without looking. And watch TV. And watch TV, that's right. Get better by watching TV, have your volume off and practice. Good idea. Practice your licks while you're watching TV and your volume's off. That way, if you're watching TV, you're also learning some guitar stuff at the same time. We're going to take another question uh, from Facebook right about now. And then we've got a big jam coming up. We're going to bring everybody back with all the cool stuff that we learned and rip it up in the studio. I'm really looking forward to that. So another question that we get is from Facebook is how do you work in the business side of things uh, to your music and that's always a challenge because as creative people you really you know I just want to play my guitar I just want people to hear it I want people to hear my songs and so it's hard to sometimes think of the business side but there's a lot of resources available now online and it's really important to learn what exactly is involved with the path that you want to take whether it's a solo guitarist like a Joe Satriani type or whether you want to be a, a, a key player in a band where you're just a guitar player and maybe a songwriter it's good to know about copyright law um, it's good to know about how the business side of things works how to get song placement if that's where you want to go so definitely doing your research on the business side and setting aside a certain amount of time in your practice routine to learning the business side of music because without the two uh, it's really difficult to make a living at doing music. Alright, I need some water. Or gear. Or gear? Your gear? Oh, my gear? Oh, what kind of gear do I like to use? Um, I prefer tube amps. I have a Mesa Boogie Road King that I like a lot but right now I'm using this really cool Pod X3 Live pedal board because it works well with the gear and uh, it's easy to tote around, but I prefer um, a tube amp sound, and so the Mesa is really cool. I like old Marshalls too. Old modded Marshalls are awesome. And I like real simple stuff, a wah pedal, maybe a chorus, a little delay, straight in, tone from the fingers. Thank you. <sighs> this water is brought to you by TuneTrack.com. They make great tracks. We're going to play you one for you in a little minute right here. Uh, Anatowski, what are some tips for keeping solos fresh for an entire night of playing 30 to 40 songs? Wow. That's a good question. Uh, hmm. Pace yourself. Andrew's had a good tip of not needing to play every note. Here's a good way. Think of the melody of the song that you're playing, and when you go to solo, Use the melody of the song when you're soloing. Incorporate that in your solo, and your solo will never be the same for any song, unless you have two songs that sound exactly the same. <laughs> so there's a good suggestion. I think that might work. We're going to give away a uh, Dream Theater CD, and then uh, we're going to give away that, that Zach Wilde signature wah. Any more questions? What, co what qualities do you look for when... Picking a good guitar. Hmm. Picking a good guitar tone, number one tone. You know what I do when I walk through the store, the guitar's hanging on the shelf, I'll just go like this. And that'll give you a really good idea if it's gonna sound good or not, just by the way it resonates. I notice a lot of new guitars off the shelf. You'll go and do that and it kinda sounds like a cardboard box or something like that, so that'll be your first sign. Tone is the number one thing for me. Um, just without being plugged in, that'll tell you if you've got a good core, because everything else 
works up from there. I love uh, humbuckers. I like single coils too, so it just depends on, uh, other than that, what I'm in the market for. Blister fingers. How can you determine the key of a song with all the chord changes? Here's a real easy way. It usually starts on the key or ends on the key. Another good way to do it, if that's not good enough for you, is to listen to the bass guitar. You can even EQ it out and just listen to the bass. And the bass will give you a good way to figure out what the chords are. And um, if you're trying to learn the song and if you want to know the key, it usually starts, chord, uh, starts or ends on the key of the song. So that's a good way to help figure out what key a song's in. And major is happy, minor is not so happy. If so, it's a good gauge to, to see if it's major or minor. Yes, those CDs are flying off the shelves. That's right. How about a big round of applause out there? Yes. Let's hear it for free stuff. <laughs> we want to thank you for joining us. We're going to do a jam here real soon. And the winner is, drum roll please, somebody give me a drum roll. <laughs> That is not a tune track. <laughs> Fergax 7 is our winner of the brand new release by Dream Theater from, uh, from our hands to yours. So we'll be uh, sending you that really soon. We're getting ready to jam here real quick. We're going to pull up all of our players to the stage. And um, we're going to rock out and show you all of our everything we've been teaching so far. I think we ought to bring Andy into the mix. Andy, Woo hey, I don't think you had enough FaceTime, man. You got a guitar? Yeah, all right. You that red <laughs> one over there? Andy, come on down. You're the next contestant oh, wow. on Guitar TV Live wow. from the Mothership. Where's my cable? <laughs> yeah, where's the cable? Definitely need a cable. So we're going to jam out right now, and we're going to bring Andy back to join us. And he's a really cool dude, and uh, he's a hard working, and he's really the nuts and bolts behind uh, Guitar TV right here. So, all work and no play makes Andy a very dull boy, isn't that right? <laughs> Gotta play, right? Have a little fun in the mix. No! Okay. <laughs> Okay. Anywhere. Right. Come on in. Center of attention. <laughs> Maestro, hit it. Let's rock this joint. I'm going to do some windmills, so look out. <laughs> right into the board. Here we go. Kick it off? Yeah.
That <laughs> was a blast. Hey, do you want to have some parting words? Yeah, I do. Okay. I just want to thank Guitar Trick so much for coming to this very special first broadcast from the Mothership Studio. Um, there are so many great things that we can do together, and uh, in the future, you know, all the interactions that we do on Guitar TV, um, after the broadcast is over, we render it, make sure we didn't swear too much, and then uh, make it available down below in the video on demand area, which is just underneath the media player you're seeing us in right now. So uh, as long as anybody didn't, you know, majorly mess up, uh, we'll, we'll be putting this in the video on demand tonight so you can come back and check it out and maybe rewind a little part of the lesson that you enjoyed if you want to really learn the lick. Um, but I'd really like to thank Guitar Tricks, guitartricks.com. I'd like to thank Tune Track for their um, very cool backing track. Very cool. I will be... Jamming too later. You guys, right? <laughs> and uh, Lee, Anders, and Neil, big round of applause for you guys. Thank you for coming to this very special event. Okay. And, uh, golf club, golf club, really cool. golf club. And uh, did we give away the wall pedal already? No, we didn't give away the we wall didn't give pedal. Away the wall what pedal. the hell? So, what were we you thinking? Know, now we uh, we are going to randomly, I suppose, out of all fairness, our uh, our producer Carl King here will. Um, yeah randomly scroll to somewhere on the screen and we are just going to choose a winner who, uh, who we see. And uh, drum roll please. Drum roll please. Okay. The winner is of the Zach Wilde signed signature wah pedal. Guitarist Chibi. You yes. won. Okay. <laughs> gonna sound like that <laughs> that's right <laughs> but uh anyways guys thanks so much and uh, be sure to email us at uh, be on and um what are you thinking about back there all right tomorrow night <clears throat> we're gonna be airing a, a special program called fresh talent we do it every other tuesday on guitar tv it's um videos that you guys submit to us and uh, we just pick really cool videos and air them we do about an hour-long show and um if you have a video and you're just seeing guitar tv for the first time Go to the top of the screen. I can't tell if it's this way or this way, but it, uh, there's one of these little circular icons at the top, and you can um, you can submit your own video. So all you have to do is plug in the URL. Maybe it's on YouTube and your name, and uh, we'll, we'll contact you if you're going to be on the show. So again, once again, thank you very much. And, Thanks, Andy. Uh, it's great to be here. That's it for us. Take care. <laughs> <Bye>. Hey. <laughs>